Welcome students. Today we'll discuss about biological hazards in foods and HACCP. The main objectives of today's deliberation are biological hazards in food, characteristics of certain microorganisms, chemical hazards in food, physical hazards in food, and finally overview on hazard analysis and critical control point. A food safety hazard refers to any agent with the potential to cause adverse health consequences for consumers. Food safety hazards occur when food is exposed to hazardous agents which result in contamination of that food. Hazards may be introduced into the food supply anytime during the harvesting, formulation and processing, packaging and labeling, transportation, storage, preparation and serving. Food hazards may be biological, chemical, physical, allergenic, nutritional, or biotechnology related. First, we'll start with biological hazards. Biological hazards occur when hazardous or pathogenic organisms are introduced into the food and thus pose a food safety concern to the consumers. Biological hazards include bacteria, viruses, and parasites of public health significance. Biological hazards can be introduced to food from the environment, for example, soil bacteria and agricultural runoff, or from inadequate sanitation practices and cross-contamination during transportation, handling, processing, and storage. The type and magnitude of microbial growth is determined in part by the nature of food, package conditions, and storage environment. The first biological hazard includes bacteria. Bacteria are single-celled microorganisms that exist in a range of habitats and can be free-living, for example, in soil, air, water, or they can be symbiotic, for example, in intestinal tract or mucous membranes of animals and humans, and have a broad range of enzymatic, biochemical, and pathogenic properties. The principal bacteria associated with foodborne illness include Bacillus cerus, Clostridium botulinum, Escherichia coli, Listeria monocytogenes, Salmonella species, Staphylococcus aureus, and Vibrio cholerae. Ingesting food contaminated with pathogenic microorganisms and their toxic byproducts can lead to foodborne illness. These illness can take the form of infection or intoxication or both. Infectious microorganisms are detrimental to their host through mechanisms which crowd out beneficial microorganisms, use up the host resources, and destroy host tissue. A foodborne illness caused by an infection can take days or weeks to manifest, which often makes it difficult to identify the causative agent. On the other hand, illness caused by intoxication often occurs within the hours of consuming the suspect food. Intoxications are caused by toxins that are produced by the microorganism either in the food itself or after ingestion. Second class includes viruses. In contrast to other microorganisms, active viruses consist of unique sections of DNA or RNA enclosed in a thin coat of protein and cannot exist independently of their living host. Depending on the combination of DNA, RNA and the protein coating, viruses can be very infectious and often pathogenic. They reproduce by inserting themselves into a host cell and altering the function of that cell to replicate the component pieces that make up the virus. Viruses commonly associated with food safety issues include bacteriophage, enteric virus, hepatitis A virus, norovirus, and rotavirus. Viruses are typically introduced into the food either through poor handling practices by people infected with the virus, that is, poor personal hygiene practices or via contaminated food ingredients, that is water. Third class includes parasites. A parasite is any organism which obtains nourishment from its host organism in order to grow and reproduce. Unlike symbiotic organisms, parasites do not supply the host with any resources, usually to the detriment of the host. Parasites commonly associated with foodborne illness include Cryptosporidium pavum, Giardia duodenalis, Tinea species, Toxoplasma gondii, Trichinella spiralis, Antimoeba histolica, and Antimoeba coli. Parasites enter food through similar means as viruses, that is, poor personal hygiene practices and contaminated ingredients. Second class of hazards includes chemical hazards. 
Chemical hazards occur when chemicals are present in food at levels that can be hazardous to the humans. Contamination may occur through various pathways, the environment which includes air, soil and water. Intentional use of chemicals such as pesticides and veterinary drugs, manufacturing processes or addition of food additives. In the food industry, there are various types of chemical hazards. Some notable ones include mycotoxins, natural toxins, environmental contaminants, food additives, processing induced chemicals, pesticides or agricultural products and veterinary drug residues. First, we'll start with mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are natural toxins which are produced by fungi and can be toxic to humans and animals. They are formed by molds which grow on crops and foods under certain conditions. There are a number of mycotoxins present in the environment, but only a few are found in foods that are usually associated with particular crops like corn and cereals. The most prominent mycotoxins which cause health concerns in humans are aflatoxins, deoxynevalenol, orcratoxin, fumonisone, and patolin. They can cause chronic effects such as various cancers, immunosuppression, growth retardation, birth defects, and renal dysfunction. Second class of biological hazards includes aflatoxins. Aflatoxins is produced by the mold Aspergillus flavus. Commodities which have a high potential for contamination with aflatoxin include tree nuts, peanuts, peanut butter, figs, and corn. It should be noted that contaminated feed can lead to elevated levels in milk as well. The proliferation of asphagellus and the corresponding production of aflatoxin are affected by drought during the growth season and high humidity during storage. Aflatoxin is a potential carcinogen associated with the development of liver cancer. Ocratoxin A. Ocratoxin A is a toxic metabolite produced by Aspergillus ochraceus, Penicillium varicosum, and other mold species. OTA has been found in corn, peanuts, and decaying vegetation. It has also been found in moldy cereals such as wheat, rye, barley, oats, and other commodities, including bread, flour, beans, peas, rice coffee, and in samples of meat where the slaughtered animal may have consumed feed contaminated with ocratoxin A. Ocratoxin A is a human carcinogen, which has also been found to cause lesions as well as teratogenic and neurotoxic effects. Now, fumonisine. Fumonisine is a toxin produced by various species of mold, most notably Fusarium verticelloides and Fusarium proliferatum. Fumonisin is one of the most frequent mycotoxins found in corn. Fumonisin causes two animal diseases, porcine pulmonary edema and leukoencephalomalacia in horses. This mycotoxin is a concern for humans as there is evidence to suggest it may be carcinogenic causing esophageal and liver cancers and may contribute to neural tube defects in babies. Second class of toxins is natural toxins. Natural toxins are biochemical compounds produced by plants in response to certain conditions or stresses, which include glycoalkaloids. Potatoes can contain natural toxins called glycoalkaloids. The major ones found in potatoes are alpha-solanine and alpha-chaconine. These toxins are formed in response to stresses such as UV light and damage, such as bruising, and cannot be destroyed by cooking. Toxin concentrations are highest in peel and sprout of potatoes and can be seen as characteristic green color on those parts. Exposure to glycoalkaloids can cause acute toxic effects such as burning in the mouth, diarrhea, severe stomach ache, vomiting, and gastrointestinal irritation. Now, environmental contaminants. Environmental contaminants are chemicals that accidentally or deliberately enter the environment often but not always as a result of human activities. Some of these contaminants may have been manufactured for industrial use and because they are very stable, they do not break down easily. If released to the environment, these contaminants may enter the food chain. Other environmental contaminants are naturally occurring chemicals, but industrial activity may increase their mobility or increase the amount available to circulate in the environment allowing them to enter the food chain at higher levels than would otherwise occur. 
Some examples of environmental contaminants include lead, arsenic, bromates, mercury, furanes, and dioxins. Division 15 of the FDA contains maximum limits for some environmental contaminants in specific commodities. First contaminant is arsenic. Arsenic is a naturally occurring element widely distributed in the Earth's crust and is generally found in trace quantities in soil, rock, water, and air. Arsenic can take two forms, organic and inorganic. Organic arsenic can be found in fish and shellfish and is the most less harmful form of arsenic. Inorganic arsenic compounds are found throughout the environment and can be released into the air through various processes such as volcanic action, mining of arsenic containing minerals and ores and by industrial and commercial processes such as copper or lead smelting, wood treatment and pesticide application. Inorganic arsenic is a carcinogen and long-term exposure increases the risk of cancer of the skin, lungs, liver, kidney and prostate. Second environmental contaminant is cadmium. Cadmium is a rare element and is usually not found in nature in its pure state but exists in combination with other elements forming compounds such as cadmium oxide, cadmium chloride and cadmium sulfide. Cadmium is used in the manufacture of batteries, pigments, coatings, plating, stabilizers for plastic, ore processing and smelting. Thus it finds its way into the environment through waste, wastewater and soil uptake. Most of the cadmium which enters the body is directly from plants grown in contaminated soil or indirectly from meat producing animals which have eaten plants grown in contaminated soil. Cadmium and its compounds are highly toxic and also suspected carcinogens. Another very important contaminant is a lead. Lead is a toxic heavy metal and is found in the environment in sources such as dust and soil. It can also be found in water and some food products, that is maple syrup and honey, that may have come into contact with older plumbing and cookware that contains lead-based solder. Lead may be found in older paint products as well. Lead have been shown to cause neurological disorders, reproductive problems and diminished intelligence. Infants and young children are particularly at risk because they absorb a higher proportion of lead from food than adults as they are still growing and developing. Pregnant women are also susceptible. Other effects are impaired mental function, visual motor performance and anemia. Symptoms of exposure to lead may also be subtle such as irritability, headaches, insomnia, gastrointestinal upsets, learning behavior and kidney problems. Another contaminant is mercury. Mercury is a heavy metal which occurs naturally in rocks and soils and can be found in lakes, streams and oceans. Combustion of fossil fuels, mining, pulp and paper industries and burning garbage can also release mercury into the environment. There are traces of mercury in almost all foods with very low levels in vegetables and fruits and high levels in certain types of fish such as shark, swordfish, marlin, ascola and orange roughly which absorb the mercury from the organisms they consume as well as the surrounding water in which they live. Mercury exists in several chemical forms. Two types are inorganic and organic mercury. Methyl mercury which is organic mercury is the most common form of mercury found in the aquatic environment and most fish have trace amounts present. It has been found that larger and older fishes tend to have the highest levels of mercury due to the bioaccumulation. Methyl mercury is suspected to be a human carcinogen. Now, food additives. A food additive is any chemical substance that is added to food during preparation or storage and either becomes a part of the food or affects its characteristics for the purpose of achieving a particular technical effect. Substances that are used in food to maintain its nutritive quality, enhance its keeping quality and make it attractive or to aid in its processing, packaging or storage are all considered to be food additives. However, some substances that aid in the processing of food under certain conditions are considered to be food processing aids, not food additives. Examples of food additives include food colors which may be natural or synthetic, pH adjusting agents, preservatives, bleaching agents, 
food enzymes, glazing and polishing agents, emulsifiers and gelling agents. A flavor enhancer is considered to be a food ingredient under the Food and Drug Regulations and is not currently regulated as a food additive in Canada for a number of reasons. The level of use of these substances is small. The history of use is well established and many international compendiums exist to substantiate their safe use. Sometimes food additives are found in food for which there is no provision in the FDR or at levels which exceed the prescribed limits. In these situations, the food may pose a risk to the consumer. Some examples of this type of situation include not permitted synthetic colors which include sudan, rhodamine, and gardenia yellow. Processing induced chemicals. Undesirable chemicals can be formed in certain foods during processing as a result of reactions between compounds that are natural components of the food. In some cases, as undesirable chemicals may be formed as a result of a food additive being intentionally added to the food and thus reacting with another compound in that food. When foods are heat processed, that is baked or deep fried, reactions occur between components of the food, resulting in the desired flavor, appearance and the texture of the food. However, some of these reactions can lead to the production of undesirable compounds. Similarly, certain storage or processing conditions may allow reactions to occur that could generate potentially harmful compounds. Such chemicals can be collectively referred to as processing-induced chemicals. Some of these chemical reactions involve naturally occurring components in the food, while other reactions may involve food additives, ingredients, or food packaging materials that were intentionally used. For these reasons, the presence of processing-induced chemicals in food cannot always be avoided. Examples of processing-induced chemicals include acrylamide, ethyl carbamate, and furane. Acrylamide. Acrylamide is a chemical that naturally forms in certain foods, particularly plant-based foods that are rich in carbohydrate and low in protein. During processing or cooking at high temperatures, asparagine, a natural amino acid, reacts with naturally occurring sugar, for example glucose, in the food and acrylamide is formed, but only if the temperature during the cooking process is high enough. The highest concentrations of acrylamide have been detected in potato chips and french fries, although it has been found in other foods as well, which include baked and roasted foods. Acrylamide is a health concern. Based on studies, it's a probable human carcinogen. Now, furane. Furane is a colorless, volatile organic compound that is used in some chemical manufacturing industries and may also be used in low levels in some heat-treated foods such as canned or jarred foods. Furane in foods can form through multiple pathways that involve different naturally present starting compounds that undergo thermal degradation or chemical rearrangement during food processing. The presence of furane in food is a potential concern because of indications of liver toxicity, including carcinogenicity in experimental animals that were exposed to furane in their diet over a lifetime. Now, allergenic hazards. An allergen is any protein that is capable of producing an abnormal immune response in sensitive segments of the population. Allergic reactions to food usually involve IgE antibodies. Symptoms of an allergic reaction can range in severity from a skin rash or slight itching of the mouth to migraine headaches to analeptic shocks and death. The type and severity of an allergic response is determined by many factors, including dosage, route of administration, frequency of exposure, and genetic factors. This is not to be confused with a food intolerance, which is an abnormal physiological response to a specific food. Symptoms of food intolerance may include cramps, diarrhea, and bloating. Anaphylactic shock is the most severe adverse reaction to food and can be fatal if left untreated. It generally occurs within minutes of consumption, but occasionally the reaction may be delayed with symptoms appearing several hours after the initial exposure. Initial symptoms of an IgE-mediated allergic reaction are characterized by itching, hives, swelling of the lips, palate, tongue, and throat. Once the food enters the stomach and intestine, symptoms may include cramping, nausea, pain, and diarrhea. 
subsequent systematic symptoms generally affect the pulmonary and cardiovascular system. The most dangerous symptoms include breathing difficulties and a drop in blood pressure or shock. There is no cure for food allergies and the only successful method for sensitive individuals to manage food allergy is to practice complete avoidance of the specific allergen. These individuals therefore rely on accurate information on food labels to manage food allergy. Inaccurate, undeclared or hidden allergens on food labels can pose a significant health hazard to these individuals. Cross-contamination during processing, packaging and storage can inadvertently produce products that contain allergens which may not be reflected in the ingredient list on the food label. Strict adherence to good manufacturing practices, hazard analysis, critical control points and allergen prevention plans will reduce the likelihood of cross-contamination. Now the final objective of the study, HACCP or Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Point. HACCP is an internationally recognized management system that ensures food safety by reduction of the risks of the physical, chemical and biological hazards in the production processes and bring them to a safe level. The HACCP system helps identify and control the potential biological, chemical or physical hazards at critical points in the process. HACCP is an effective system of minimizing or eliminating food hazards which can be adopted by organizations across the food chain. Hazard analysis with respect to food safety. Hazard analysis is the method of identifying the various food safety hazards which can arise from a process. The hazard analysis includes the documentation of the undesired consequences of the hazards and analyzing their potential causes. Hazard analysis is made up of two components, hazard identification and hazard evaluation. Critical control point. The critical control point is a step at which control can be applied in order to prevent or eliminate a food safety hazard or reduce it to an acceptable level. The seven principles of HACCP. To implement HACCP, in your organization, the below mentioned seven principles are to be understood and followed effectively. The first principle is conduct a hazard analysis. Second, identify the critical control points. Third, establish critical limits. Fourth, establish monitoring procedures. Fifth, establish corrective actions. Sixth, establish record keeping procedures. And finally, establish verification procedures. Now the benefits of implementing HACCP. First one is it improves food safety standards of your organization. It ensures that your organization's process produces food safe to the consume. It provides positive image to your organization in the market. It prevents legal complications and lawsuits filed by the consumers for the consuming unsafe food. By avoiding food-related incidents and preventing the failure of food safety, HACCP saves cost in the long run. Also, HACCP makes sure that you are compliant with the food laws and rules. HACCP enables organizations in the food chain to compete in the world market by propagating its commitment to safe food. HACCP also reduces customer complaints and it enhances the business prospects. With this, we come to the end of today's deliberation. Hope you have enjoyed this session. Thanks for your attention. Have a great day ahead. Goodbye.